Today I'm going to be showing you a nice little graph sketching hack for Oxbridge interviews. So if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge for maths or basically any STEM subject, you will almost certainly have a maths interview. And generally one of the common topics in maths interviews is graph sketching. And of course you should know all of your A-level graphs, like the back of your mind, uh, back of your mind, the back of your hand. You should be able to recite them on site. So if someone gave you a quadratic or a cubic or something like that, you should know how to sketch it. But you could also get these weird kind of graphs like this where you're not really taught how to sketch an A-level. And to be honest, if you do need them for A-level, you'll just put it into your calculator and you can't do that for interviews. So I'm going to be showing you how to sketch or a, a nice little trick for sketching graphs like this. By the way, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jamin. I studied maths at the University of Oxford and now I help students who are looking to get into Oxford and Cambridge get in. Last year I had 13 students, 12 of them got Oxbridge offers. Let's have a look at this graph. Our objective is to sketch it. And the trick for sketching this is essentially noticing that it's sine of x times e to the x. Crucially, it's a function times sine of x. And so the idea here is what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw e to the x first. And I'll use different colors here to help me. So e to the x we know looks something roughly like this. So that's y equals e to the x. And what I'm also going to do is then sketch y equals minus e to the x as well, which remember you just reflect this in the x-axis. So something like that. Now, why have I done this? Well, because we know that sine of x times e to the x, because sine of x is always between minus 1 and 1, sine of x times e to the x is always going to be somewhere in between these two curves and essentially that's we're gonna we're gonna we know that our graph of y equals sine x e to the x in fact i'm going to draw this in black we know that for example when x is zero y is going to be zero because of the sine x it's zero times something so we know our graph is going to start at the origin and we know that as x increases sine of x also increases. Sine of x will increase until x equals pi over 2, which I'll mark on maybe here. And when x equals pi over 2, we know sine of x hits its maximum value of 1, and so we know therefore that the black curve should also touch the green curve, but it should only touch it because we're not going to go past a y value of 1 for sine of x. So it's going to look something like that. Now, when x equals pi, we know sine of x is going to go back down to 0, and so therefore what, sine of x times e to the x would be 0. So if I mark on pi, roughly there, our graph is going to come back down there. And you can kind of maybe see where we're going with this. What I'm going to next do is consider what happens at 3 pi by 2. And I know that the y value, uh, sorry, sine of x is going to be minus 1, and so the y value is going to be whatever e to the 3, or negative e to the 3 pi by 2, which is going to be on this blue curve. And so it's going to look something like this. And again, it will touch just there and come back up. And then at 2 pi, my graph will hit this again. And then it's going to go up to this thing at 5 pi over 2, like so, and just touch there. I, mean, I haven't drawn that perfectly, but you get the idea. We'll just touch the curve there and then come back down like so. And this is what this graph would look like. And if I could also continue it maybe on this side as well. It's going to kind of go up like this, down, and so on. So it's almost like a sine curve, but as you make x bigger and bigger, you're kind of stretching it out, which kind of makes sense because we're multiplying by e to the x, which obviously gets bigger and bigger as x approaches infinity. And this is a really nice way to sketch this graph. So what's the trick here is if you are asked to sketch something where it's sine of x times something or equally like cosine of x times something, we know because it's bounded between minus 1 and 1, the trick was to sketch y equals e to the x and y equals e, uh, minus e to the x and then kind of just uh, think about the kind of m most interesting points so pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And think about, well, the value of sine and then what that would do to the black curve. Either it means you're on the x-axis or you're touching the green or the blue curves, like so. So this is a way where you don't have to faff about too much with, 
what lots of people might do is like try and work out the turning points of this curve but the turning points here aren't actually super interesting so the turning point here isn't actually at pi over 2 it might look like it the turning point is actually somewhere here slightly after pi over 2 but that point itself is not really of interest 